I'm here with Michael Bernardi from Bernardi Fine Art Auctioneers in Hatfield, Pretoria. Michael, where does Bernardi Fine Art Auctioneers come from? Bernardi Auctioneers was originally started by my father and my grandfather. That was Fox Auctioneers. We are now a third generation business, became George Bernardi Sales and then finally Bernardi Auctioneers as we are today. My father was an auctioneer for more than 43 years in his career. My brother and myself, Carl, have taken over the business and we are continuing in the fashion that he did. How does one become a fine art auctioneer? One is you can go and study fine art and get a fine art degree, which is always a good background. Alternatively, you can go into the business world and you can work in an auctioneering firm where you start at the bottom and uh, as you progress, so you develop your skills. Included in this is basically what we call the University of Life. In that we talk basically is your experience. Okay. Michael, can you tell us about the South African fine art auction boom up to 2008? Michael, South Africa went through quite a lot of changes after 1994 and the South African art market picked up basically in the beginning of 2000. Uh, the reason being that you had a lot of people who left South Africa and decided to established themselves elsewhere than in South Africa, overseas, for example, in the UK, uh, America, um, the Far East. A lot of them still wanted to have a piece of South Africa with them, in a sense. And based on that, they became interested in South African art. So what happened with the market was there was a lot of interest from overseas. And a lot of the prices were then uh, influenced by the interest from overseas, from ex-South Africans. That created um, a wider audience who then started to pay attention to South African art and that is what caused the prices to escalate. With the sudden interest in South African art of the collecting field, specifically let's refer to some of the prominent black artists like Gerard Sokoto, Ephraim Ngatani, George Pemba, to mention a couple of them. The interest in their work was of so great demand that there weren't enough of the works around. So the prices were driven by the scarcity and then the quality of the works as well. So you have a situation where, and I always say this, a good work sells itself. It doesn't matter how you market or advertise it, it will sell itself because it's a good work, intrinsically. Now based on that, you have the situation where a lot of works come onto the market and the prices are not realistic to where the market should be and in doing that you find that uh, once the market has been satisfied in what they're looking for it will sink back to a normal relative price bracket and I think that is what happened after 2008 where I would say your boom went on a bit longer Michael probably up until about 2010 you go and you buy a painting today and let's say you pay 10,000 Rand for it, you like it, it's an unknown artist, it's decorative, it appeals to you, it appeals to your wife or your partner and you decide yes we want to buy it. So you buy it and no intention of selling it again, just that you like the work, so you hang it in the house and after five years you take the work in and the auction house looks at it and the auctioneer says it's a very nice painting. And let's say you get your 10,000 back, you're lucky the money you spent you've got back. If you sell it and you don't get that price again, you've had the enjoyment of owning it. Okay? If you sell it and you make a profit, that's your good luck, it's been your advantage. But that doesn't always happen. In the South African fine art boom up to 2008, did black South African artists achieve record prices? One of the doyens of South African black art was Gerard Sokoto and uh, his work has increased dramatically in value. In the early days, Sokoto didn't fetch much for his paintings, but his work has become highly in demand, especially his oils, because he didn't paint as, uh, as many as uh, some of the more prolific artists. And his early works, what we call the South African period, which is his um, up until 1946, if I'm correct, before he left South Africa, are his most sought after works. Uh, those oils in the early days, you could pick up uh, a work for 
10, 12,000 rand. Okay, those works today you are now paying in the region of between 500,000 to 3 million rand, depending on the subject matter was. He did um, eventually live in exile in Paris, in France, and there was an interest in his work from overseas as well. So again, it comes back to that question of what the influences were. Because of the exposure that Sokoto had, uh, he was able to evoke the interest of those people other than just South Africans, which has affected his prices. Michael, which South African artists are the most significant for you and which of their works have made a real impression on you? Um, in my career, I've been fortunate enough to offer the works of Jiro Tsukata and Ephraim Ngatani, George Pemba, um, another chap called Dan Rukwati, Peter Clark, to name a couple of them. And I think the important thing to understand about these artists is how were they trained, who were their influences, and did they purely come from an African background or were they also influenced by the Europeans? And if you look, for example, at the early works of Gerard Zakoto, you can see that he, he was a masterful painter. He could use light, he could use color, and he had empathy in his works. There was a warmth to his works as well. And uh, he portrayed what township life was like at that stage in that time period. I think that's also very important. That's why his works have become very sought after as well. Another artist, for example, is George Pember. George Pember, if you look at some of his portraits, how he painted the motions of the sitter into those works. Um, there was a work that we had for sale a while ago, which was um, in the bus. And if you looked at the faces of the daily weary travelers, he must have actually physically sat in the bus in situ and painted it when he was doing it. And then there is a light that is reflected in the work as well, which has a warm glow to it, even though the scene is actually a scene of sadness. So there you can see a true artist. Mm -hmm.